I'm joined now by Bruce Fine. He's an expert on constitutional law, and he helped draft the articles of impeachment against President Bill Clinton. He's also a former general counsel for the Federal Communications Commission and represented Edward Snowden's father over surveillance by the National Security Agency. Well, Kushner denies colluding with Russian officials or knowing about any collusion. Uh, will this help the White House or hurt it? Well, I don't think that pushes the ball far down the road. Collusion doesn't really even have a legal connotation to it. So it's just a statement, well, all right, I didn't commit the crime. It's about as definitive when President Trump asked Mr. Putin over at the G20 meeting, well, did you collude? And he says, no, all right, then move on. Uh, he may be telling the truth, he may not. But obviously he's self-interested. And there's one element, too, to his statements that is glaring to a lawyer, and that is the law prohibits soliciting any kind of aid from a foreign government in an election campaign, even if it's totally unsuccessful. Uh, and the emails that were released by Donald Trump Jr. make it clear that the meeting that uh, 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 Mr. Kushner attended was for the purpose of aiding the Russian government's overall plan of helping Mr. Trump defeat Hillary Clinton by providing what they call dirt or opposition research on her. So simply solicitation without more, even if nothing happened afterwards, is still a huge problem under the criminal law. Bruce, uh, Kushner was uh, not under oath. His testimony given behind closed doors. Talk to us about the significance of both of those. Well, the first, that it's not under oath, it has some significance, but we don't want to overstate it. There is a law, a criminal law, that prohibits, uh, it's called the, the False Statements Act, uh, lying in a material way uh, to obstruct a congressional investigation. So he can't lie with impunity simply because he's not under oath. Now, the fact that it was held in secret uh, is problematic because it means that many who know much, perhaps even more than the members of the committee, uh, are not privy to exactly what he said. And oftentimes, and I know this was true having worked in Watergate and other scandals, uh, members of the public out there can detect uh, falsehoods or wrong statements and quickly bring it to the attention of, of the committee or law enforcement authorities. That wasn't done in this particular case, so we're kind of guessing as to what questions were asked to him. I mean, one thing that I would like to know is who helped him complete these uh, security clearance forms where he initially excluded literally scores, if not 100 meetings with foreign governments. Did he talk to the president about that in completing the form? Uh, and at present, we are clueless as to whether these kinds of questions were asked. Uh, while he's testifying, of course, the president uh, going on another tweet storm uh, describing the attorney general as beleaguered. What do you think Jeff Sessions' future is in this administration? I don't think it's, it's, it's got a, a long shelf life. And, and I think, uh, you know, perhaps the most critical development since the last time we've spoken here is the report in the Washington Post that show, based upon the communications intercepted by our own intelligence agencies, National Security Agency, the ambassador of, uh, of Russia to the United States told his superiors that he did discuss with Mr. Sessions issues that related to the campaign. Now, Mr. Sessions, under oath before the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee in his confirmation, specifically denied having any conversations that related to anything other than his senatorial uh, career and duties. And basically, uh, that could be a, a problem of, of perjury or jeopardy. But his credibility is in doubt on that score. We know that one senator, uh, has uh, Al Franken, has demanded that Mr. Sessions come and return and try to explain that discrepancy. And he's also under attack by his own president, who says, I never should have appointed him if I knew he was going to recuse him. Bruce, Bruce so, we've got about 20 seconds. I have to ask you about uh, his pardon powers, because he seems to think he can pardon himself. Uh, I wanted to get your take on that, since you know constitutional law. Well, my view is that since he's the only one who could actually exercise pardon, he could, but I think it gets him into the frying pan from the fire. That is, he could use that pardon himself to show why this was an impeachable offense. Because what's critical is that in order to have a pardon effective, you have to accept it. When you accept it, you're conceding you committed a crime. I don't know whether it's very smart for a president to accept that or concede that he's committed a crime requires a pardon. He'd be in impeachment proceedings very quickly. All right, Bruce Fine in our newsroom live with us. Thanks so much for your observations.